Hello everyone, I'm Hannah Collison from Inspired Creations, Surrey School of Sugarcraft and today I'm going to show you how to make Lily of the Valley. If you have any questions feel free to email us at hannah at inspiredcreations.uk.com. Look forward to hearing from you, have fun having practice. Okay, so Lily of the Valley. Because this is a video, you can pause it at any time. So if you want to, you can work alongside and have a go as I'm showing. So first of all, I've got some 28 gauge white wires. You can use green. I'm going to level all of those wires off and take a pair of angled tweezers and clamp the top of the wires. just so you can bend a nice tidy closed hook into the end like so and then you're ready to make some balls out of sugar flour paste i'm using squires kitchen sugar flour paste but you can use any different um, flour paste that you prefer to use or that you have available give it a good old stretch to activate the gum And give it a good twist and squidge between your hands just to warm it all up. And then um, start to make seven balls. They'll be different sizes from tiny pea size, graduating up in size, the maximum being uh, process pea size. Once you've got seven, just put them in size order. Each one of these you're going to need to re-warm up. So we're going to take a little bit of take just one of the balls, give it a good old warm up and just make sure it's crack free before you start. Take one of your wires and add a little bit of glue. Take the wire that's unhooked, the unhooked end, push that through and embed the hook into the top of the bud. Carry on and do that for all of the flowers. Each time you pick up a piece of paste, you're going to need to warm it up just to make sure it's crack free. Otherwise, you might find that the bud will fall apart as it dries. Feed the paste up the wire and then just put a little bit of glue just to help secure. Ahead and the same for all seven little buds. Last one. Okay, so once you've made all seven, just leave them to one side. Just adjusting my camera slightly just so that you can see what I'm doing. And then we want just a small piece of white paste. We're going to roll this out nice and thin and cut three blossom shapes. I'm 
nice and thin, turn it over, bit of cornflour if you feel like it's going to stick. And the blossom cutter shape that I'm using is one centimetre diameter, so it's fairly small. I've just cut three shapes out. Try and get it so that they actually come out into your cutter. It's actually much easier to get a clean cut, but if they don't, well, that's okay. We can pull them like out like so. Okay, pick your three largest balls. Put a little bit of glue on the tip end and drop the shape onto the top. Centralize it. And then Simply press so that the centre of the petal adheres. Cocktail stick would work or you could use the back of a paintbrush, something like this, just to get that piece pressed on. So do the same with the other two largest ones. And the third one. Like so. Okay, so now you have three blossoms and the rest are buds. Now, if you pop them into size order, they're a bit fiddly these. Like so. We can tape these now. So take a little strip of tape, nothing too long. This is Nile green, half width. Stretch it so it becomes tacky and then begin to add in one below the other. So if I move these slightly out of the way, so you've got just under the chin, we're going to leave a bit of a gap. So you've got about a centimetre gap on the second petal, or second bud. And then the next smallest one is going to come in underneath. So at the moment, these aren't too big. So we can do one twist per bud added. Allowing a little bit of the stem to show, which means we can bend the stems a little bit in a while. Now, the thing to remember with this is that if you have the time, you can actually do this make all these pieces in advance and let them dry before you try and assemble them and that will make it a little less fragile. So I'm just going to add in a blossom now. But looking at where the tape is, it's going to make it taped up quite tight. So once I need to add the blossoms in, I think I need to twist the tape a couple of times rather than just once around the stem. Couple of twists and then pop your next one in. So the idea is to have a bit of stem showing about a centimetre each time. So once they're all in you've got a bit of a straight line going on. Just keep an eye if they're starting to come off. This time we can tape all the way down to the base of the wire, but don't trim anything. Keep this all loose at the moment. Coming back to these wires now, we need to bend. So we're going to just tweak each stem. So I'm closing the tweezers a little bit as I'm working my way down the stem and that creates a curve rather than a straight bend. Treat each one at a time, but start at the bottom because it's very difficult to begin at the top because everything crashes in. Ones at the top will be more bent over. 
Okay, so now we've got a curve all the way on all the, all the individual stems. Move the petals to the left and right so you get a zigzag effect. Okay. So you've got a zigzag effect. And then if I turn that at the moment, the main stem or the spine of the flower is quite straight still. So what I want to do is curve it over like so. Okay, and that finishes off the flower for you. Now, bringing in some colour, what I've got here is a mix of moss green and lemon yellow. Mixed onto a tissue, I have a flat dusting brush. Initially, I want some lime green shade going on to the tops of the back of the buds. Do the other side as well. And as you progress down to the main big flowers, there's a lot less colour. So just catching a little bit maybe on the stems, but no more. Just to blend it all in. So a lot less colour as you come down the stems. Okay, so that's kind of a lime green shade. Leave that to one side for a moment and I'll show you how to make a leaf. The leaf is made using gooseberry green petal dust. Give that a good old warm up. And if your leaf's quite big, you might want to use a 26 gauge wire or a 24 gauge wire. And what we're going to do is roll a sausage. So have a little ball of paste, it's got half a Maltese size. Roll it really tightly between the palms of your hand. Roll it into a sausage and make it a little bit more pointed at both ends so it's torpedo in shape. It's 28 gauge wire that I've cut into three. Feed it through the paste so it comes above the wire, so the wire comes above the paste, and then twiddle to close up on both ends. Now, um, if you just take a poppy veiner, but for the moment we'll use the back side. Drop that into the back of the veiner, press down nice and firm. This will flatten it, but won't give you any veins. So you could use any kind of veiner for this or some plastic sheeting if you prefer. So this, if you want, you can actually use a foam pad and add on some vein lines just by using the Dresden veining tool. We would run a tool, the tool down the center to get a central line and then close lines from top to toe either side. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can put the veiner back down, but this time with the ridges showing. And this would go into the middle of the poppy veiner. And we can close and get some texture that way. Okay, now either way, this needs a central vein line. So we're just going to draw a line down the middle and then close the leaf up a little bit at the base and we'll give it some shape, just tipping the wire back a little bit so you've got a slight curve and bring it to a point at the top. The wire's gone into here. Bringing the colour back in. Now the Lily of the Valley leaves are more just moss green rather than the limey shade. So you can add your color quite generously front and back. 
again, if you let the leaf dry, it's a little bit easier to colour. So I'm just going to take another piece of tape and we're going to put, add this leaf to our flowers. I have made another stem here so I could, if I wish, add in my second sprig slightly lower down. Take that in first and then add my final leaf. So this is two sprigs of flower and three handmade leaves. Add that in. Take all the way down to the bottom. Chop off using a pair of wire cutters, the excess, and then cover up the wire that you've just cut through so you can't see it. Adjust so that you've got your best view. And there you have your Lily of the Valley. So if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email on hannah at inspiredcreations.uk.com. And also if you'd like a kit list for this one so that you know what to prepare before you actually go ahead and make, likewise, please just simply email me. So um, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.